afternoon and welcome to Across the Fence. I'm Jolay Whitney. Today we kick off the first of a two-part series about Vermont agriculture with a focus on local food. Over the next two days, we're going to answer the question, how can New England feed itself and what would a regional food system look like? In the past decade, Vermont's agriculture and food system has blossomed. According to a report published earlier this year by Vermont Farm to Plate, Vermont's farm and food products represent more than 10% of all sales in the state for food purchases. Vermont food means Vermont, full stop. And to talk about this very Vermont topic, we've brought in the best of the best. Ellen Kaler is a dedicated leader for Vermont agriculture and Vermont farmers. For decades, she has committed her time and energy to the farm to plate movement in our state, which has doubled Vermont's consumption of local food from 5% to 10% over 10 years, which is quite an achievement. And she is the executive director of the Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund, which administers Vermont farm to plate. This year, she was inducted into the Vermont Agriculture Hall of Fame as an ag innovator. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's oh, great to be back. Absolutely, and a well-deserved title for you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Definitely an honor and definitely was a surprise. Well, we're, we're glad to have you. And uh, tell us a little bit about what the Sustainable Job Fund does. It's like pretty behind the scenes, but you're involved in a lot of Vermont's agriculture. Yeah, so the Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund actually was, was set up by an act of the legislature back in 1995 to work on things like agriculture and food systems, but also forest products, working lands, renewable energy. But then in 2009, they asked us to work on developing what's become known as Vermont Farm to Plate. And so uh, what we do is take a whole food system approach to the development of our food system. And uh, as many of your listeners know, the, uh, uh, the food system is not just production agriculture, right? It involves seeds and fertilizer and soil and, and all of the things that go into creating the ground to be able to produce uh, products. It is agricultural production, and we have a very diverse array of, of products. And then it involves processing and distribution and getting into wholesale and retail markets. And then because we do universal recycling, it also means that we're collecting food scraps as well as manure from our dairy and other livestock farms and returning that those nutrients back to the soil. So it's really a whole soil to soil approach is what we take. Sure, and when people think farmers, and I'm, by people I mean me, of course, you think about just the people working the land, but you, you guys kind of are all on all parts of that, of that cycle. Yeah, because, you know, you can't just, like, if a dairy farmer is producing milk on their farm, it doesn't stop there, right? There has to be a, a milk truck driver that picks up the milk, it goes to the processing plant where it's processed, and that goes into many different products from fluid to cheese to yogurt to cottage cheese, like all diff butter, right? And then it has to get to the stores. And then we have to, or it gets to restaurants, or it gets to the hospital, or to our, in our schools, and then we get to consume it in some way, shape, or form. So it takes a lot of people, and in fact, there's over 61,000 Vermonters that are employed in the food system, which is about 10% of our private sector employment. So well over 11,000 businesses in Vermont, either farms or food businesses, that are, have something to do with the food system. So it's a big, big, big part of our economy, a big part of our rural economy. And it's important to, that, we, that we strengthen it, and that's part what, of what Vermont Farm to Plate's all about. So let's look back in time a little bit. Sure. When this started in 2009, kind of the, the farm to plate initiative, what did it look like? What did Vermont's local food market look like? Well, it was still in the early stages. I mean, we've always had some level of farmers markets, right? I mean, uh, former Secretary Roger Albee, I remember him saying when he talked to his, his, his uh, elderly mom, she, and he would say, oh, I'm working on local food development. And she's like, well, we've always done that. Like, what's new about that, mm -hmm. right? We've always hunted, we've always fished, we've always had backyard our gardens we've always had farmers markets on some level but back in the in the in the mid o's uh, you know starting around 2000 ish to 2009 you saw a big upswing in farmers markets across the state spread out you saw a lot of community supported agriculture you saw more farm to school uh, initiatives starting up because of folks at Shelburne Farms and NOFA that were doing that, getting getting ag education and, and extension also, getting ag education into the classroom. You saw the Vermont Fresh Network get started up where that was linking producers and farmers with chefs and getting more local product onto the menus, right? And that's in addition to everything that dairy had already been doing. So all of a sudden you saw this upswell of like, dairy's great, maple's great, but we also, and apples are great because we have a lot of orchards, but we also like kind of like chicken and 
pork and we like our vegetables and we like diverse fruits and we like grains. We used to be a, a bread basket back in the 1800s of growing a lot of grains in, the, in, the, in this Champlain Valley. So it was kind of like, well, why couldn't we actually have a more full plate approach to our food? And that's really what we set out to do in developing a strategic plan for strengthening the entire food system, including dairy, but also everything else. Because as I said, you can't just survive on dairy alone. We need it all. Sure, some people might try, but you, yeah. <laughs> you probably should. <laughs> and let's start like from the, the ground up, so to speak. A lot of your work talks about the kind of the working land, yeah. which of course is kind of an ever changing uh, concept or entity. So how do you think that kind of changing world impacts people's livelihoods and, and their economy in your work? Well, I think the key thing is is ever changing, right? I mean, it's it's really, farmers know it best because they are dealing with different weather every day, right? So you think about how farmers have to adapt day to day, sometimes hour to hour, based on the kind of weather that they're facing with their crops, with their livestock. It's the same thing with markets. So there's changing consumer preferences, there's uh, global trade, there's consolidation, big time consolidation that's happened in production, processing, distribution, and retail across this country over the last 50 years. And so the marketplace itself is ever evolving, ever changing. So if anybody goes into the business of farming or the business of developing food products and thinks that they're gonna be able for their entire lifetime of doing it, to do it the same way, Th they shouldn't be in that business, right? Because the marketplace is diverse, the marketplace is ever evolving. And so therefore our production practices and the way in which our businesses and our farms evolve, they too need to, to be constantly changing and, and adaptive. And I think the key here is like emotionally and mentally, we just have to learn how to manage change better because it is gonna happen. It's the only thing that's constant in the universe, right? You, it's Everything's gonna change. So how do we adapt to that emotionally and mentally so that we can we can go with it and we can get um, and take advantage of the opportunities because in a changing marketplace, there's always consumer preferences that are looking for that new item or that um, different item, something that's unique, that has a story behind it. And that's what Vermont's particularly good at do, developing. And kind of building off of that and the ever-changing la landscape, a lot of a lot of farm work has moved a little bit more towards maybe either ag innovation or vegetables, but Vermont has such a rich dairy farming history. So how does a state kind of hold on to that while also innovating? Yeah, well, dairy is the anchor. Like, we cannot lose our dairy industry in this state. Even though it has reduced the number of farms, the number of acres being farmed and the number of animals being milked has been relatively constant, even as we've lost the actual number of farms. So I think that's really critical to understand. It's also really critical because it is, it is animal agriculture that keeps the, the working landscape looking like it does. Like with the open fields and forests and mountains, the open fields part is because of dairy. Now, what we have seen is an increase in beef cattle production. So that's also animal, large animal agriculture. That has a role to play. Um, but as I said, we're looking for diversity. You know, if you think about, um, during the pandemic, one of the things that we all experienced, right, was shortages of food in some it, in the early stages, where there were some, for the first time ever, for some people, like empty shelves. And why was that? Well, that's because we had um, we've had this consolidation in the marketplace uh, across the country, across the world, and it's made us vulnerable, and it's made our supply chains really uh, brittle, and so supply chains started breaking down. And so when you think about, well, what's, the, like, what's a, an answer to that? It's about diversification. It's about having more of what we eat produced within the area that we live. So it's really thinking about how do we have the, the anchor of dairy, maintain that working landscape, secure the, the, the land supply, right? Farmland is a finite resource. We need successful farms to be able to maintain that land base so that we can feed ourselves. Because with climate change, with uh, potential for future pandemics, we need to think about how do we actually secure more of our own food supply, producing it here in Vermont, but also the region, so that we can feed ourselves more of what we actually eat, we're actually producing here. So that's, that's key. But 
it's also like there's a lot of young people that are coming into farming that don't come from a farm family background and they're interested in, in different types of livestock or they're listed, interested in vegetable production or value added like cheese production or something like that. So there's a, there's a place for everybody, right? It's not one or the other. It's really about how do we diversify uh, so that we can have, we're, we're able to withstand the challenges of the, the global marketplace and uh, we're more secure overall, less vulnerable. And we're running a little bit out of time, but before we jump into our next part of the show, um, what should Vermont do to make sure that farming, which is historically not necessarily the most profitable industry, what should Vermont do to make sure it's profitable both for the producers and consumers? Well, a big part of it is uh, we have this amazing network of business farm viability service providers. So UVM has a component, Intervale Center, NOFA, uh, Vermont Housing Conservation Board, the Vermont Farm and F uh, Forest Viability Program. And they're fantastic because they really work on the economics of the, the business of farming and the business of, of, of food. We have a lot of service providers. My organization, the Simul Jobs Fund, we work with a lot of value-added food pr manufacturers, for instance, to strengthen their ability to survive and thrive, have good wages and good benefits for their employees, for instance. You know, when the, we, we need more affordable housing in the state because we have a lot of farm workers that need to be able to afford to live in the state so that they can be working on, on our farms, for instance. And then from the consumer perspective, you know, consumers can do a lot to actually strengthen our local food economy by making every day, you know, you have to eat usually three meals a day, sometimes two, uh, and you have choices. So when you go to the grocery store or you go I'm to sorry, a restaurant. I, I have to interrupt you really I'm quickly. Sorry. No, no, yeah, yeah. I just want to get to our last question yes. before we run out of time today. Um, tomorrow's program, we're talking about New England Feeding New England, um, which is a big project. Yeah. Can you just give us a sneak peek about what that is? Yeah, well, it's, it's taking Vermont and taking it to the whole region. So trying to reach 30% local food, uh, lo uh, regional food consumption uh, from regional production. Great, and I can't wait to talk about that tomorrow. Yeah, thanks. All right, and to learn more about the Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund and the different projects they're supporting, you can visit the website www.vsjf.org. That takes care of our program for today. Ellen will be back with us tomorrow when we'll dive deeper into the New England Feeding New England project and so much more. My thanks to the crew behind the scenes here at WCAX who make our visits possible. I'm Jolie Whitney, have a good one.